Hallelujah. Amen. I want to really encourage you. Amen. And you may be seated because I'm going to read several different scriptures as we get into our, our lesson here. And I want to remind you once again, everything that I'm teaching is coming from a, a book that I have been studying called Gates and Fences, Straight Talk in a Crooked World. Uh, and the author is Lori Wagner. Uh, it is a very, very good book. I've had this book for a few years, but really I never picked it up until just recently uh, uh, because I, I got it at a convention several years ago uh, and it just sat on my desk uh, or, or on my bookshelf and then you know here recently the Lord just started dealing with me especially with the uh, you know this world that we're living in uh, and, and, and we need to be reminded you know because as, as Christians we're living a, a different life than the rest of the world and we need to live an example and a godly example. And we need to make sure that there are gates and fences in our life to help uh, keep things uh, in and also keep things from the outside uh, getting in. And a lot of the things uh, uh, that I teach, and I want to preface this this evening, uh, what I'm teaching tonight uh, is not, uh, you know, just... You either you do this or you're going to hell. That what I'm what I'm going to teach tonight is just something that is a a, a better way. Uh, and if you don't go by what I'm teaching tonight, uh, I'm not saying that you're wrong, but I'm just saying if you go by what I'm teaching tonight, in the long run, uh, you'll be a whole lot better off. I mean, and for our especially for our young people who are not here, uh, I want them to be encouraged to log on to. Uh, YouTube and they can watch these messages because it is imperative uh, young people and old people alike older people not old we don't have any old people here we just have older people uh, these uh, gates and fences need to be established uh, from our youth on up and if we'll plant them now uh, when we get older we won't have to worry we may have to mend the fences a little bit but they'll already be there and somebody say praise the Lord Amen. And tonight, uh, in this uh, sixth lesson, Life Inside the Gates, uh, uh, tonight we're going to talk about the gateway of early dating. The gateway of early dating. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse 7. And like I said, last week, some folks might say, well, all this, this doesn't... Uh, apply to me well you know if you're a, a member of this church and you may be older uh, the whole church needs to see that you back the pastor up in his preaching and teaching that's why it's so important to be here on a Wednesday night because we do a lot of hardcore teaching there are some folks who have no idea what this church really really teaches because they don't ever show up on a Wednesday night I hate it for them they're also not getting the full meat to Amen. And they're not getting the full diet and exercise that they need. Amen. And for those of you who are here on Wednesday nights, we call you our Wednesday night warriors. You are Wednesday night warriors. Amen. And that's what we need in this kingdom. We need warriors. Song of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 7 says, Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. In other words, he's saying, do not arouse love before it's time. Then in Song of Solomon chapter 3 and verse 5, he says, Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Don't arouse love until it's time. You want to know what happened here? That's the same thing I read just previously. So he's emphasizing. And a lot of times we wonder why we hear the same thing over and over again. Well, it's because there's something very, very, very important about it. Song of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 4. Don't be surprised here because it says, Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Do not arouse love before it's time. So three times uh, the Song of Solomon admonishes us, do not arouse or awaken love before it's time. Everyone say, in Jesus' name, touch my mind and my heart. In Jesus' name, Touch my neighbor's mind and heart. 
In Jesus' name. Touch our young people's minds and hearts. In Jesus' name. Touch our adults' minds and hearts. In Jesus' name. Help us to desire a better way. And if the church will say amen. amen. If you love Jesus, give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. amen. As we discussed last week, arousing physical or intimate desires uh, uh, before having the freedom to fulfill that desire only leads to frustration and possibly a hard fall. And like with any temptation, you set your feet on a slippery slope and wonder why we nosedive to sin. If there's anything that you have a problem with, and it doesn't matter if it is a physical or a lustful temptation, any type of temptation, you need to stay away from it. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. If you have a problem uh, with the bottle, guess which aisle you don't need to walk down in the grocery store. Yes. If you've got a problem with, uh, uh, if you're trying to break the addiction of nicotine, guess what? That you need to stay away from when you walk in the store. Amen. I didn't get as many amens there. Uh-oh. Hallelujah. Everybody say amen. 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 If, you've got a, if you've got a problem with, with anything, if you have a problem with chocolate and you just can't get enough of it, like those kisses that we had last week, if you've got a problem with those, guess what? You don't need to pick up. You need to leave that alone. Can you say amen? amen. Because what happens is once you start with a little bit, you just can't stop. Amen. And any temptation, uh, and the scripture tells us to flee temptation. Amen. Amen. Because God makes a way of escape. You know, that scripture says the Lord will make a way of escape. So that right there tells us that when it comes to temptations that we don't need to stand up and try to buck up uh, and, and fight. We need to run because God knows us. So I, when that door of escape is open, I need to run through it, amen. Or I don't even need to allow myself to get into that place where I am tempted, amen. Have you ever heard uh, the old saying uh, that says, let sleeping dogs lie? Yes. Amen. I know some of our older folks have, uh, have heard that before. And, and uh, the reason it, it, it's a good idea and the reason it's really good advice, uh, because, because if you don't let a sleeping dog lie. I mean, you may end up being a human chew toy for that dog. Amen. You know, this that saying is talking about if there's a dog, a guard dog laying somewhere uh, sleeping, you need to try to sneak away from there or, or, or get through there without him seeing you. You don't want to wake him up because you know what's going to happen when you wake him up? He's going to chase you down. Yes. Hallelujah. Last week we studied, uh, uh, our study was on the fence of purity and that now we're going to discuss the gateway of early dating. And like I said in the beginning, as I preface this, uh, uh, this is not, uh, you know, I'm not saying that this is hard line. Either you do this uh, or you're disobeying. I'm trying to show uh, everyone here there is a better way. In all of this, we're advising our young and old alike to leave certain passions at rest. And this talk, uh, topic of dating is not, I'm right, and if you don't see it my way, you're wrong. This idea of waiting to date is simply a better way. Until you are at the age, and, and the reason that I advise you as a pastor and as a man of God to wait to date, especially if you are not, uh, especially if you're younger or you are single at this time, it's better to wait to date until you're ready to get married. Amen. Amen. And, and, and you don't, I mean, like I said, you don't, because you are arousing certain passions. There was an old uh, tradition long before uh, nowadays. They didn't. They didn't date. They did something called courting. People didn't go out alone. If you had your eye on someone, you went to, to that little young lady's house. And you want to know what you did? You went and sat in the parlor with that young lady. That's right. 
You didn't go out to the movies. You didn't go uh, out for a soda pop. You sat in the parlors or you sat out on the front porch uh, right there under the watchful eye of a good, strong daddy. Amen. And a mama and a grandma. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That would keep their eye on you. Amen. Uh, and so why are we saying, uh, you know, it's better to wait? For one reason, if you're not in a relationship to where you're at the age of being ready to commit. If you're young, you've got so much ahead of you. Right now, your focus needs to be uh, upon your studies. Amen. Amen. Up on what you're going to do with the rest of your life. Because if you get wrapped up in a romantic relationship with someone else, you want to know what begins to happen. Everything else goes south. That's right. All right. Now, if you are older and you are single, and I'm not, I apologize, Brother Chopper always thinks I am picking on him because I stare right at him. If you are older and you are single, and Paul told the, the widows of the church, he said, if you are single, he said, you're better off to stay that way and be committed to the Lord as I am. And I know that's some hard stuff, but this is one of those things that Paul taught that said, you don't have to be like me, but I'm just saying if you are this way, you're better off. But if you are going to get into a relationship, uh, I advise you don't, don't uh, uh, taste the waters here and then go taste the waters there. If you're ready to get committed to someone and you're older, go ahead. If you're going to be just friends, just be friends. But if you're ready to commit and do the things that are done in a committed relationship, then you go ahead and tie the knot. Because if you don't, you are sinning. That's right. I know this is 2012 and, and, and the world doesn't see that way, but the Word of God is forever settled in heaven. It is the same yesterday, right. today, and forever. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. One important reason uh, uh, to wait to date uh, until you are ready or, or go ahead and court uh, uh, is because it, it, it protects you from becoming desensitized. Because each time a person gives in to a self-indulgent behavior, it becomes easier, easier to ignore that inner voice of conscience and its warning signals. You see, as soon as you cross the line one time, the next time it is so much easier to cross that line. And then the next time, it's so much easier to cross it and then go a little bit further. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, make sure you're listening to the pastor. Sure Amen. Pastor. Hallelujah. Those of you who are chitter-chattering, you know who I'm talking to. Hallelujah. Amen. Each time a person, the nervousness disappears as the conscience is numbed and people find themselves plunging deeper and deeper into levels of involvement. When you first find yourself attracted to someone, the mere brushing of fingertips can send goosebumps through your body. You remember that the first time? It was like electricity. Ah. But then, you know, that touch isn't enough. And then it's uh, the holding of the hand. And the first time you held hands, it was, oh, wow. And then finally it gets to the point to where, you know, that's just old hat. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. And then each time it's further and it's further until you are desensitized. Once you become comfortable with this phase of physical touch, the excitement settles down and then the search begins for new ways of achieving th that euphoric feeling. And then the temptation to progress further in a physical relationship grows stronger and more demanding. And remember, what you feed will grow. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? If I feed my relationship with God, if I pray and I fast, if I do all that I'm supposed to, I'm going to get stronger. But if I play footsies uh, with the devil, hey, that relationship is going to grow and grow until all of a sudden, as I heard someone say this week, uh, uh, you know, if you let the devil put his toe in your front door, uh, he's not going to stop right there. He's not going to be satisfied with just getting his foot in your door. He's not going to be happy until he is living in your house. 
We've all have heard uh, the, the example of the frog and boiling water. If you take a little bullfrog and you turn a, a, a pot of water on on the, in the stove on the stove and you get it to boiling and you drop that frog in, you know what he's going to do? He's going to jump out. But if you take that, wa that, that, that pot of water, put it on the stove, and, and it's at room temperature, and you set that little froggy in there, and this is, a, this is a scientific experiment, okay? And they've done it. And you slowly and gradually turn the heat up of that, that pot of water to the point to where you started out at room temperature, and you gradually turn it up to where it's boiling. Do you know what? That little frog will set in that pot of water until it boils to death. Right, yes. The same is true uh, with you and I. Uh, you know, when it, we become desensitized, what happens is that little frog became desensitized to his surroundings. And the same is true with this world that we are living in. And unfortunately, with the garbage that's going on outside, unfortunately, the church is so desensitized to what is good and what is acceptable. All right. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Statistics show a correlation between early dating and early intimate activity. Uh, I hope you understand what I'm saying. In other words, young people who start out dating real, real early, uh, they start getting into uh, uh, marital type relationships before they're actually married. Yeah. Those who wait until they're older, amen, are more likely to be clean and pure when they get married. Yeah. Somebody say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. In other words, we need to let sleeping dogs lie. So there's a connection between waking up in your dating life and early in uh, intimate involvement. It is wise to wait for God's best. Can you say amen? Amen. When we avoid, when we wait, uh, we avoid getting caught into the potential dangers of the dating trap. Uh, compromising our future for today's short-term pleasure is not good trade. Amen. Joshua Harris wrote a book. He is the author of a book entitled, I Kiss Dating Goodbye. I recommend it to all of our parents and all of our young people. I kiss dating goodbye. In his book, he discusses the difference between what he identifies as smart love and dumb love. Smart love is sincere, God-focused love that is a, a concern for others. Dumb love is selfish and flirtatious. Joshua Harris also makes the point that dating practices in our Western culture are little more than a training ground for divorce. Why? Because if one person doesn't work, guess what we're going to do? We're just going to break up and move on to the next person. Yes. Right. If we get into a little fuss or a little fight, we're just going to call it off until that person makes it right. Or if they don't come groveling at our feet, I'll go find somebody else and start going out with them. And it is teaching us and it is desensitizing us and it's teaching uh, you as an individual that, hey, if this doesn't work, uh, then I'm going to go on to something else. Amen. Yeah. That's why it's so much better to wait. Uh, can you say amen? Amen. 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 So uh, God help us. Uh, amen. It's much, we are much wiser to wait for God's direction instead of jumping from relationship to relationship. We show our appreciation for His Word and godly values of sincere love, respect, and commitment. It's much wiser to wait until you're ready to consider a lifetime commitment instead of getting involved in a relationship. The, the, the old, well, we're just going to date doesn't work, you know, and we have people who say, well, we're, we're just going to date and then, you know, we'll, we're, we're going to, you know, and you need to, I've heard people say, well, you need to date several people until you find the right person. Well, you want to know what a mate for life is not finding someone. When you're right with God, you pray that God will send you the right person. This isn't a treasure hunt. This isn't one of those uh, Friday night youth activities. What do they call them where you go on a scavenger hunt? And, you know, you're looking for somebody to spend the rest of your life with. Uh, and I don't care if you're 18 or you're 80. And if you're wanting to get married, you don't need to go uh, here and there. You need to pray, God, send the right person. If it is your will, God, you know that I'm lonely. Uh, God, you know that I need that uh, companionship. Uh, uh, you know, pray, God, send you the right one. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Uh, so, I, like I said, it doesn't matter if you're 18 or 80. If you're not ready for a lifetime commitment, to, you're wiser to wait today. Amen. And let me recommend, uh, and, and like I said in the beginning, this is not to either this way or the highway. I'm just trying to show you a better way. And all of us have made mistakes. Amen. And all of us have not listened to the man of God or the woman of God when we should have. Amen. But so, so I'm just I'm laying this out here for you. And, and dating for Jesus isn't the way to go either. We don't flirt to convert. Amen. Let me say that again. We don't flirt to convert. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get them interested in me and then bring them to church and and then God's gonna say we don't flirt to convert. We don't date for Jesus. If it's the Lord's will, you be a witness and an example to them. Amen. They'll come into the church. Uh, you know, I, I remember a young man that he used to bring, you know, he, he won this beautiful young lady into the kingdom. And she was a beautiful young girl. Uh, and, and he taught her a Bible study. They, they, they sort of dated, uh, uh, but, you know, not, not really. They were more friends. Uh, and she came in and got, got in the church. Uh, but... They, they wasn't a couple. She went on and married someone else in the church. Amen. He didn't lose his faith. She didn't lose her faith. They're both married to two different people as adults and they're, they're committed to God and they're committed in their relationship to their spouse. Amen. Uh, I, I, and, 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 and like I said, please folks, when I preach or teach, don't go out of here. Don't go into your homes. Don't go, go to others in the church and say, hey, you heard what the pastor said. You're not living right. Folks, don't do it like that. We're not ever going to win somebody. I'm not here to crush your toes. I'm here to give you the Word of God. And what you do with it when you walk out of here is between you and God. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to love you all the way until we get to heaven. If you don't follow what I'm saying here tonight, I'm not going to go out of here and say, you know, you're a dirty, rotten scoundrel. No, I love you. I didn't always listen to my pastor. You want to know why? He still loves me. Amen. Amen. Loves me enough that he, a few years ago, he drove all the way down here and spent a whole weekend preaching a weekend revival. He still loves and cares for me. I want to let you know, I backslid as a teenager. I ended up out in the world. Uh, I, w I was really, really messed up. But my mama never stopped loving me. My mama never stopped praying for me. My pastor and the church that I grew up in never gave up on me. And I'm here today. Hallelujah. But now there were people who would catch me out, uh, amen, and put their finger in my face and tell me, you know you're wrong. And I knew I was wrong. I, I, you, we don't need to tell anybody they're wrong. The Holy Spirit lets them know that. Can you say amen? And if they've heard the preaching of the pastor, amen, they, they know, amen. Uh, and like I said, that tonight this dating issue is just a, a better way. So if you're looking for someone, as a matter of fact, I know we have all new tools. You can go on the internet. You can go to ChristianMingle.com. Uh, uh, you know, uh, one, in, uh, one in five relationships uh, all start on the internet now. I've heard all the ads. Uh, and if you need that kind of help, God bless you. Uh, I, I guess you can use it. But I'm here to tell you, if God has someone for you, God will help your paths cross. Amen. 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 And if that other person isn't as committed to the kingdom of God as what you are, remember, you're not dating for Jesus. Right. Your flirting is not going to convert them. Right. Listen, please. Because we'll make a mistake. And, it, and, and you'll get into that point to once, it, it, say you do get even more committed and then you get married and then you see that that person's not as committed to the kingdom of God as what you are. You're going to have a relationship for the rest of your life. Amen. You see, Paul advised those who came into the church, and this is scriptural here, you know, if say one came into the church and that spot, one of the members of that relationship, that marital, marital relationship got in the church and the other one didn't. You know, he said if your spouse was okay with it and they supported you and you could stay married and, and you live in the church and they not and they're not, you know, he said go that way. He said, but if not, you need to part. If you don't believe me, read the scripture. Okay, it's in there. 
But if you're in the church right now, you need to be looking for somebody who is in the church right now. Amen. If you're on fire for God, guess what? You need to find somebody that is really, really on fire for God. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14 says uh, in the New Living Translation, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? Or how can light live with darkness? Man, there's no, no mix there. As a matter of fact, uh, in your business relationships, uh, uh, you know, and I know people get involved in all types uh, uh, of relationships and all types uh, of agreements. We need to be very, very, very careful. So back to this, should we wait, should we date or wait? Please understand, I'm not picking on anyone who is dating or in, on anyone who uh, is boyfriend or girlfriend. I don't, you know, if you're 80 years old and you have your sweet little... And we had a, a wedding last summer uh, of an elderly couple. It was the most beautiful thing. Davey and Shirley getting married. Hallelujah. I... I, I, I I didn't know if they were going to make it all the way through the ceremony or not. Uh, I was happy to participate on, in, in that. Uh, praise God. They're living for Jesus. They're loving Jesus. They were here last Sunday. Uh, amen. And, and you thank God for it. Uh, and, and like I said, they met to each other uh, on, on a website. You know, 80-some-year-old people meeting on the Internet. Hey, that's fine. They're both committed Christians. Uh, and they're living for Jesus. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise amen. Amen. Uh, so, so I don't need anyone here telling anyone else that they're wrong if they're dating and they're disobeying the Word of God. I just want, uh, I just want you to know uh, that I'm sharing with you, young and old alike, that what I'm sharing is wisdom. Amen. And it's a, it's a better way. When we wait for God's best, we avoid getting caught in the potential dangers of the dating trap. You know, there, there is the will of God and there's the perfect will of God. There is the uh, permissible, I'm sorry, there's the permissible will of God and there's the perfect will of God. There are some things that God will permit in our lives and we can still be in the permissible will of God. And then there's the perfect will of God. You know, I don't want to be in the permissible will of God. Just, yeah, that's okay. You're, you're, my, you're my kid. I, I love you. I, I want to be in the perfect will of God. That's what I want. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when we wait for God's best, we, we avoid getting caught in these dangers. Compromising our future for today's short-term pleasure is not a good trade. There is a better way to live. Plus, falling in and out of love and getting hurt really isn't fun. How many people have been hurt in relationships? We all have. It's not fun. You know, it doesn't matter if you're... 16 uh, or 60, when you get hurt in a relationship, it doggone hurts. It sure does. That's right. It does. That's right. So why, you know, jump from place to place where, hey, I can wait. It's okay to feel you're missing out on some things. Well, I'm missing out on, on this or that by not, you know, it's okay to miss out on some things. Can you say amen? Amen. Because a true Christian's walk is marked by self-sacrifice. Somebody say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Romans 12, 1-2 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. My walk with the Lord is to be a sacrifice. Amen. Amen. The kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul says we are to be living sacrifices. A living sacrifice. The problem with living sacrifices is they want to crawl off the altar when the fire gets hot. I'm a living sacrifice. But when the fire gets hot, I'm ready to climb down off of that altar. You see, up in here, when the Spirit's moving, it's easy to say, I will, Lord, I will. 
But when you get out there and you feel the heat of the sacrifice, when you're the only person walking by the way of the Word and everyone else isn't, and they're looking down on you or laughing or saying, hey, there's something wrong with you, that's when the sacrifice begins. We're living sacrifices. But let's focus on the positive here. You may be missing out on what seems to be a good time, but you're also missing out on a lot of heartache, pain, and regrets. And you get the added bonus of having a clear conscience. You won't have a head full of memories running through your mind during your married life. Say you dated uh, 50 different people or 10 different people or 5 different people. And then, ah, oh, they didn't work out. And then you find someone you get married. Well, you always have those memories. You know, memories don't have delete keys. You ever notice that? Memories don't have delete keys. They're there. As convenient as it would be, I wish I could get rid of some of my memories. But they're there. They come back. With all this in mind, don't be disappointed if you don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I've sat with young people before and they're just stressed out. To, I, want a, I want a boyfriend so bad. I want a girlfriend so bad. Even older people, I've, I've had them come. I really wish I had someone else in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, you've got Jesus. Amen. And, and I know sometimes you can't, you, you want a hug. Yes. <laughs> Well, pray. God will send you someone uh, and you'll get... But along, along with those hugs comes a lot of heartache. You know, it's sweet in the beginning, but it doesn't matter if you've been together two or twenty years. There are days when you're thinking, ugh. So if you're not ready for the long haul, baby, don't you dare. Everybody say amen. Amen. And know that it's okay to be different than your friends, uh, you know, within the church and without. If you're not dating and you want to wait until you're ready to get married and God sends you, that's all right to be different. Uh, it's all right to stand out. Uh, we are in this world, but we're not of this world. No matter how others choose to live their lives as Christians, uh, we should be viewing any potential romantic relationship through God's perspective. How is this relationship going to draw me closer to God? Whether it's dating or whether it's friends. How are these people going to help bring me closer to God? Are they going to help bring me closer to God? If not, uh, uh, they just need to be one of those, hey, how you doing? Kind of friends. Because if they're going to take you in the, in the opposite direction, you need to flee and someone say amen. 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 Dating is not a recreational activity. Pup, pup, golf is a recreational activity. It's not a game to play with people's emotions, including your own. Playing with people's emotions is not good and it's not fun. Amen. It's tempting to jump into a relationship because it's what I want to do. Because I think someone's cute, nice, or fun. Because I want to feel attractive and desirable. But we should pray, Lord, help me to wait for your best for my life. Amen. Understand by following the paths of godly wisdom, I will avoid many pitfalls and problems. Lord, give us the strength to live by our convictions regardless of any loneliness or pressure we may feel. Remember, we can do all things through Christ and that includes accepting His timing and His plans. God has something beautiful and perfect for each and every one of us. But we need to wait. Amen. When God sets that open door before us, then we walk through. Don't kick that door down. Because it might not be the right one. As you wait, pray that He'll put a passion in your heart to work for Him. Building His kingdom and serving others. What does the Scripture say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And His righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.
probably extended my, myself just a little bit, uh, but I want you to feel free. If you have any questions, hey man, you can ask a question. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable raising your hand uh, right here in the church setting, you can wait, you can send me an email, you can call me on the phone. If you call me on the phone and you expect to call back, please leave a voicemail message. Because if you don't leave a voicemail message, uh, that means you, you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> Later on, you wanted to talk to me right there and then. Um, but if you don't leave a voicemail. Uh, but if you do have, is there anyone that has a question tonight uh, that you want to ask? If I can't answer it right now, uh, I'll answer it uh, later on. But, you know, I want you to know you can ask a question at any time about what we've been talking about tonight. Don't ask me, you know, about something that's off the subject. Uh, but, and like I said, if you have a question, feel free to send me an email, call me on the phone, uh, catch me, you know, later on after church. Uh, and, and we'll get, you know, and I do want to point out, especially on Sundays, and as we're here on a Wednesday night, um, especially on Sundays, uh, uh, you know, we've got people coming in and out. Uh, if you have a question for me, please stick around and ask me that question, because on Sunday mornings, it's really, really important uh, that, that I'm able to greet everyone that leaves uh, rather than getting caught up, because I, on, sometimes when I get down from here, I can't get even down off the platform without being approached by two or three different people and that's what I'm here for but I do especially on Sundays I, I, I need to be able to greet everyone as they leave and, and if it's really really important I don't mind sitting here my lunch my dinner will wait uh, everybody say praise the Lord praise amen so I, I don't have a problem with that uh, I ask you to stand to your feet uh, and I hope and pray that you receive this uh, in the love that, that I prepared it. I want you to know that I love everybody that's in this church. You are a part of me. You are my family. Many of you, I talk to you more and I am closer to you than my, my, my family that I grew up with because I'm a thousand miles away. Uh, and, and you know, you're my family. And you're, you're, I'm going to heaven with you. I'm planning on them going to heaven too. Uh, but we're here together now. Uh, and, and I just want every person, young and old alike, to know that you are important. You have a place in this church. We don't want to push anybody out. We don't want to run anybody off. Uh, we're not in the business of hurting people or wounded people, wounding people. Can you say amen? Amen. And man, they, we, we don't sacrifice one another. And, and we don't leave those who are hurting to the side. We pick them up and carry them with us. And everybody say amen. amen. 